This game contains strong language, gore, and violence. You have been warned. Why well, hello there, travelers, and welcome to- Now, I'm not into FPS games, but after seeing the trailer for this game, I was interested in the story and what secrets this facility held. The game begins with a powering sequence, booting up the kernel, which I believe is you. There are no faults detected, so it checks the facility parameters, and unfortunately the facility is under heavy lockdown, so your consciousness is booted up for quarantine to begin. You awaken behind a glass door that soon opens. You hear sirens going off, and despite what the game has told you, you are actually in terrible shape, and you need to fix yourself before beginning your journey. This is a great way to start your survival horror, making the player desperate to look for any resources that could help them while also carefully traversing the premise in case there are any enemies lurking around the corner. A sense of unease is brought upon the player when you have to take the armor from one of your comrades. You hear banging coming from a door you cannot open. You hallucinate a soldier staring right at you at the end of the hallway to then disappear with rusted bars jolting out of the walls and ceiling. And lastly, you trench through a river of blood that could only be explained as part of your hallucinations. Unfortunately, this is as far as the hallucinations go. However, it is a great way to begin the game and set the tone for what you're in for. The best part of this opening sequence is when you open the facility doors and it is pitch black in there. So you take out your lighter and push through into the darkness, illuminating what little light there is. And then you hear... You do not have the ammo nor firepower to take him on, so you are forced to run head on into the darkness, not knowing what enemies could be ahead of you. Thankfully, the end is not far, but man, it is a strong start. You enter the hospital section of the facility, and hopefully now you've been managing your resources properly, saving up on what ammo there is lying around the place to be able to take on the massive threat that waits for you ahead. Now, if you're like me, you'll probably head upstairs to collect some resources, but experienced players could just run down that hallway since they already know how to lose the zombies and collect the resources that they actually need. Or you could do it your way and just blast the zombies ahead of you and then punch the rest if you run out of ammo because there should be like a few of them there. You enter the sector that's got radiation that's been spilled out. However, you cannot interact with the giant machine that's making this loud sound, but I assume that's what's causing the radiation, even though there's no radiation in this room, but in the next room. Not much else to say about this level, but just head into the next room. Trust me, you don't want to be distracted when you're in a room of radiation. You've now entered the sewers, which should probably be the lowest part of the game, but that's just my opinion. I, I, I don't make this facility. You go through the sewers feeling grimy, slow and wet. You climb the ladder for the first and only time you get to use a ladder, and it feels amazing. However, in the game you never climb down a ladder, even though that is possible. But an even greater feeling is when you're able to expand your inventory so you can carry two more items, which is a fantastic thing to have within a survival horror game. And now for the alpha level. This level is by far the scariest level within the entire game. Not only does it start off with a chapel, but it also gives you a safe room for for you to prepare ahead. This level alone is what convinced me to actually make this type of video in the first place. Because the enemies in this room are randomly spawned, so you don't actually know where they're going to come from if you were to play this again. So good luck. It's also scary for the fact that you're constantly going downstairs even though you've just been to the sewers. So you're going even deeper into the facility, and there's no music to back you up. So you're constantly on edge as to what could be around the corner or who could be behind you to start chasing you. You know it's going to be a good game when you have a P90 to take on these massive threats, and yet you still feel on edge. You've now made it to the entrance, and after you've sorted out your items, you come across even more stairs for you to go deeper down into the facility. Uh, I mean, come on, can't we use a ladder or something? When you eventually get to the bottom, you open a massive door, and there are tons of zombies on the opposite side. There are also huge vehicles next to you, but you can't actually use them, which is completely underutilized. I mean, imagine getting into one of those massive trucks or something, and just mowing them all down. I mean, that would be epic! 
Oh well, maybe in a future update, hopefully. After dealing with this horde of zombies, you find these grenades. And do not use those grenades until you get to the climax. Trust me, you'll know when it's the climax when you start to hear the music. Now, I get that quarantine is supposed to be a hard, unforgiving game, but man, how dirty is it for you to go halfway through a level with so much items that you've collected and have a shop there without a storage box for you to put your stuff away? I'd prefer a storage box over a shop at this point. But hey, you're compensated with an inventory expansion, so I can't complain that much, really. You also get, in my opinion, the best shotgun in this area, but unfortunately the rest of the game doesn't supply you with any more shotgun gun ammo and if you do find it it's basically obsolete you open another massive door and are greeted by these red glowing crystals uh i don't know what they're for but they look nice the door behind you closes you have now entered the hive This is what the game is built up to, the final climax, for you to prepare the resources you have gathered throughout the game to get through this last fight through the hive and escape quarantine. You go down even more stairs, and you are somehow brought to the open world. Roll the credits, even though there are no credits. There's also another character you could play as called the Grunt, and his story is like nowhere near finished, but I understand it, it's still in development. But it'll be cool to know where it ends up. There's also three additional content in the game called Wave Mode, where you get 250 crones and you have to work your way up to get bigger, better guns. The Shooting Range, where you only get a pistol. It'll be nice to have a shop there and you have like a ton of money where you buy the gun you want to use and practice with and then you like hit the button to start the shooting range and, and yeah, get a high score. And the open world where you could just drive off the map. But the best part of the additional content is when you go onto the developer map and you get to choose your own loadout and then start the game. This could be really cool because you get to set your own challenges when doing the story or you could just load yourself up with the best gun there is and then just obliterate everyone quarantine is an estonian word for quarantine and this game is developed by only just one person it probably would be nice if you could get some more help on the game you know maybe flesh out some little stuff i mean it is brilliant of you to get content creators to playtest your game so you can refine all the little details and improve it as you go along so this last little bit is for you with what we thought of the game the first thing i want to address is actually in the tutorial where it teaches you to crouch prone and jump you never need to use these in the actual game because there's no obstacle for you to crawl under or jump over. The tutorial also teaches you about how to read like postcards or any letters. There are no postcards or letters in the actual game, so that's actually missing. You could either get rid of that in the tutorial since you're never gonna use it, or you could implement letters, pages, I don't know, stamp cards, into the game for you to actually read, to learn about what happened here or about the people before the outbreak. This could help fill in some story elements that might have been missed. The next thing is that the main character actually swears way too often. It's okay to have a swear word here and there, but maybe not in every single sentence he gets the chance to say it. The next thing that I want to address is that the maximum amount of money that you can get during the game isn't enough to get the bulldog plus the ammo for you to take on the hive at the final moment. It'll be so rewarding to fight with that maximum power against the hive for the final climax. 
But because of the lack of money, that's just not possible. Drathic felt like the game was a bit empty for him, probably because he didn't have to prone or crouch around obstacles or something. And also, I've checked under every bed, there's like nothing under them, but if there was something under them, it could incentivize the player to actually use the prone key to get good stuff. I only came across two bugs, and I understand that the game is still under development, but I'm gonna say them anyway, so hopefully you could probably fix them. So due to the low FPS, your hand when aiming down the sights of the gun could start to spaz out and go into the void. This is entirely my fault, but we're getting a new PC to see if we could try to help fix some of that FPS drops, and yeah. So don't, don't worry about it too much. The last thing is that since you can't delete any of the saves you've made, you have to go into the folder itself to remove those saves so that you could start a fresh new game. However, this could bug out the game and then you'll never get a save point ever again. Which means if you die at the hive, you're gonna have to redo the whole thing. So yeah, a delete key would be really good to have. But overall, Carantine is a really fun survival horror game. It constantly put the pressure on your health and your resource management, all the way to the end where the climax feels like the final challenge. And when you beat it, you feel like the greatest colonel who ever lived. So yeah, I quite liked it. So thank you Traveler Storms for joining me on this adventure, and if you liked it, go ahead and show me that you did. And support the developer in any way you can. That'd be awesome. And other than that, I'll see you! the next adventure.